Hi and welcome to this official Geo Tracker for Nuke tutorial. Today we're going to look at the basic setup for geometry based object tracking and show you a very simple example of getting an object track in a quick and easy way. But what is geometry based object tracking in the first place? Essentially, it is about recreating the path and motion of an object we see in the video by aligning and matching geometry in one of the frames and then tracking it throughout the footage. So how's that possible? We'll need a Kintools Geo Tracker plugin for Nuke. Let's quickly see how to install it. Let's go to Kintools.io Downloads Nuke Package, select the Nuke version you're currently using, just download it. And while it's downloading, it might be a good idea to type your email address in here to subscribe to our newsletter so that once in a while we'll email you about important updates, new plugins and tutorials. Next, you'll need to open the folder that's inside the downloaded zip file and run the installation file. Just follow the instructions and when it's completed, that will mean you have GeoTracker inside your Nuke. And you can find it here on the side panel among other Nuke nodes. So here's a basic setup for geometry tracking. You'll need a geo tracker node. It comes with three inputs. BG is our plate. Ideally, it has to be undistorted. And there's one more thing we need to do about it. Let's go to geo tracker settings on the properties pane, type in a name for the analysis file. You can also specify the folder where you want to store it, then press the analyze button, select the frame range and hit OK. This will create an analysis file that will significantly speed up the tracking process. The next input is camera. That's the one we'll use to look at our 3D scene. And then we also need a geo, which stands for a 3D model of the object we want to track. The more accurate the model is, the easier it's going to be to get a stable track in the end. There's also an additional input for a mask, but we'll talk about it in our next videos. So the workflow is as simple as that. We're going to match our 3D model with the object right in the viewer and then just track forward from that point. You can actually track from any frame in the middle or in the end. We're going to start from the very first frame because here we can clearly see the front, the side and the top of the car. So it gives us a good opportunity for model placement. So here's how we do it. We'll press this center geo button to put our 3D model in front of the camera. Now we're going to left click on the mesh to create a pinpoint on its surface. And with that, we'll drag it on top of the car. Then we'll create a second pin to scale the mesh. The third one will help us rotate the model and then we can add more pins and drag them to the corresponding points in the plate to accurately match the 3D model with the target object. If you need to delete a pin, just right click on it. Note that the number of pins on the mesh does not have any effect on the actual tracking. We use them only as a tool for placing the model. When you set or adjust your model position in a frame, GeoTracker creates a manual keyframe that stores the translation and rotation data of your model in that frame. You might need to adjust the mesh opacity or color to see it better. Just go over here to the wireframe section and crank its brightness up or down. I'll go over here to colors and choose the one that lets you see it well over your background. One of the things to consider when aligning the 3D model is the focal length of the virtual camera you're using. It has to match with the value of the real camera on the set. When you know the right focal length value, you can select the camera, go to the projection tab and just type it in over here. Or if it's unknown, you can use the estimate focal length option. We'll talk in detail about that and tracking zoom shots in the next video. Alright, now that everything is set up, let's go to the actual tracking. Just press this track to end button. GeoTracker will play the footage and make the 3D model follow the car, thus recreating its path relevant to the camera. If you see that at some point the 3D mesh is off, you can pause tracking by pressing cancel and adjust its position in that frame. You can drag these pins one by one or only the selected ones or even all of them with the toggle pins option. Since we've made adjustments to our 3D model again, we have a new blue keyframe on our timeline. You can switch between the manual keyframes with these buttons up here or you can press and hold Alt and the forward and backward arrows on your keyboard. We want GeoTracker to recalculate the tracking data between these keyframes according to our adjustments. So let's move the playhead somewhere in between and hit refine. Now that it's completed, we can check how good our refinement is by clicking on the stabilize viewer button. This locks the object in the center of the viewer. So when you press play or switch between the manual keyframes, that makes it easier to see what's going on with the mesh and whether it sits well on top of the object. So let's track on, pause where the mesh is off, adjust and refine till the end of the footage. Now with just a few keyframes, we got a wireframe motion, which is pretty consistent with the movement of our target object. 
Let's see what's going on in 3D. Over here is the camera and the model moving in 3D space relevant to it, just like the race car in the footage. Now that you have a 3D object track, you can use it for many purposes like adding CG elements, visual effects and so on. For that, you'll need to go to the results tab. Down here, there's the export button with a number of options. Let's quickly go through them. You can export your tracking results either as a transform geo node that's going to contain all the same data as the geo tracker node. That is basically the 3D model animation. Or you can export it simply as an axis node where you'll have a point in the 3D space instead of a model containing all the translation and rotation data. Then you can export your camera with the new focal length value inside of it if you've changed it or used the estimate focal length option. And you can also export your results as a tracked camera node in which all animation will be inverted so that the camera will be moving in the 3D space relevant to your model. It is basically a way of getting a camera track and you can also effectively use it for reprojections. You can also link the output if you plan to make further adjustments to your tracking and then those changes will be automatically transferred over to the exported nodes. So these were the basics of 3D object tracking with GeoTracker for Nuke. In our next videos, we'll talk about tracking both the camera and the object in the same shot, using masking and smoothing to remove jittering and make your tracking more stable. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell to stay informed about our new tutorials and streams. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.